everyone, and welcome to another episode by uh, Trip 101 of our Travel Talk series. My name is Mirja Bhatt. I am a content and project executor with Trip 101, and I'm very happy to welcome you back to another episode. Uh, in this series, we talk to different tourists, uh, different travelers, different tour guides, and local experts, and we collect their expertise on how to travel their dream city better, so we can help you as much as we can. Uh, in today's episode, we will be going to a wonderful land of Ghana, where we have uh, our very experienced tour guide for me with 10 years of experience. He's licensed and he's ready to guide you. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to today's episode for me. Uh, can you please right. introduce yourself? Okay. Sis uh, Florence is a tour guide. Sis uh, Anna. Sis, I'm going to do the talking, questioning, and then an answering. And I would say I'm much delighted to have this opportunity. I'm overwhelmed because there's not anyone could, who could have an opportunity like this. Once again, I'll say thank you to Trip 101 for choosing tour guide for me. And then I would say that working me, with me would not be a disappointment because I've been a professional and certified tour guide for 10 to 11 years now. And my tours include business tours, cultural tours, uh, historical tours, among others. I even have food tasting tours and food tours as well. One interesting thing too is I'm so flexible and I can customize stores to suit the need of the tourist or my tourist guest. So this is Kwame for you. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm sure after today's uh, travel talk goes live, we'll know that we are in Ghana, we have to call for me. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Can you tell us about today's city that we'll be talking about? We're talking about Accra, the capital of Ghana. And we would say Ghana is a country that is peaceful. Ghana is a country that claims to be a true democracy. It is safe and endowed with sightseeing. But whether you are for an architectural tour, on the an Accra city tour, which involves a lot of monuments, going to the market in Makola, at center, playing some drums and all that, uh, Accra city tour wouldn't be bad for a start because we do have tours that are outside of Accra and all that. Right. Uh, I, also know, I also know that Ghana in general is a very underrated destination. I'm happy to be a part of a series where we can bring more light to this wonderful destination. Yeah, Ghana in West Africa mm -hmm. would be proud to be one of the first or even the earliest countries to have gained independence on the 6th of March 1957 from British rule. It was an eye-opener for other countries in West Africa to struggle for their independence. Since Ghana is a motherland and safe, mothers are so caring. So it's an undeniable fact that Ghana is a destination. You look no further. It is where you need to come. And then you experience the culture, the, the mode of life, our societal norms, among others. It's just a tip of the iceberg. Everyone should just look at coming into Ghana and then be part, being part of this movement uh, and all that. That's wonderful. So before we uh, dive uh, deeper into Ghana and Ekra, can you tell me about what you love about your job? Uh, you've been a tour guide for a long time. So if you can yeah. just tell me one thing that makes it worthwhile being a tour guide. Being a tour guide is not just for the financial part. You should have the zeal mm -hmm. to be an enthusiast, be adventurous and relate to people. So right. it's not just about being a tour guide, but it's about their personality. So me, for instance, as Kone, adventurous, I, I like to travel. I am able to socialize within my community and that actually makes it work worthwhile or make me, supported me into being a certified tour guide. Apart from the experience, as well as the, I'm an adventurous uh, kind of person. So all contribute to being uh, a tour guide that has been satisfied and it's worthwhile to be one for the matter. That's great. That's a great perspective. Okay, let's get into our main interview today. Uh, before we talk about all the beautiful things that Kara is made of, let's talk about how to get to it. How far away is the city center from the airport? And what's the easiest yeah, way to get there? To be frank, the city center, which is Accra, is very big. As to how far to the main downtown from mm -hmm. the airport is around 20 minutes, depending on traffic. Or it could okay. be at 25 or at 30. So normally on Mondays and Fridays, they are really like rush hour. 
when people get to go to work and all that. So you realize that if you get into Ghana to Kutuka International Airport and you want to get to the city center, we advise that you'd have to wake up early in the morning or maybe later afternoon where traffic would be a bit minimized and that. So I would say like a 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes from the airport to the main city center. Okay, great. And uh, what's the easiest way to get there from the airport? Yeah, we don't allow our clients to actually book taxis and all that or try to get on an app and then maybe uh, book an Uber, Taxify, Bolt and all that. We have one vehicle to pick up clients. Being a tour guide, your client has to be put at the forefront and then his or her safety is your most priority. So this is a question that I can give you two answers. There are clients that are very adventurous that would want to book their own car when they touch down. But there are clients too that maybe it might be the, their first time in Africa. So we'd be like, okay, call me. Uh, can you make a like, pickup arrangement? Mm -hmm. Of course, we have cars depending on the number of the client and the request. Right. For adventures, you could use a taxi at the airport, but their prices are exuberant. And we have the Uber, we have one called Taxify, we have Boat, we have Django, a whole lot of them. But I wouldn't advise clients to do that because they seeing you as even uh, worse than now. They try to price exuberantly high, which of course, to me, it doesn't really make sense. Yep, I can relate to that. <laughs> okay. You also mentioned that some tourists are more adventurous. So can these type of tourists who want to travel local public transportation, is it available for them? Yeah, we have this local transportation called Trotro. Trotro means cents. Cents is not even up to a dollar. So it is the cheapest commercial local transport for tourists to have the experience of a local. So Trotro is a recommended one. Okay, great. Are there any buses or subways they can take? We have the buses. There are some buses that mm -hmm. go to uh, a street destination. And as I said previously, we have many buses that do the troll. Maybe, for example, if you're in Brooklyn, you want to go to Bronx, <laughs> there will be a trotro from one location to the other, which is very cheap. People even get to a light on the way, depending on the streets or their locations. So it's, it's the same here, but it's like locally cheaper. And I can recommend that for tourists who want to have the trotro local experience for them who have wants to have the feel and all that. Okay, that's great. Are they also like travel passes or travel cards that tourists can? No, we don't have travel passes. If you use an pass, it's very, very cheap. That doesn't, it doesn't factor. We don't have uh, such system here. That's great. So now we know how to get to the city. What do we do next? We yeah. can do the independent square. So I'll recommend the art center, the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, Independence Black Star Square and also W.E.B. Du Bois Center. So the art center is actually a craft market where they, there are skilled, talented locals who craft drums. Some also are good at uh, paintings and all that. So there's a market. I actually like to infuse that in my tour. They play drums and drink fresh coconuts. <laughs> or we can hopefully make Jack a dull voice. I don't stress my clients in between tours. I would like us to inculcate that so they play so that center. And if you want souvenirs, after your time, you want go going back and you want a souvenir. Art center is the best. Independence Square is where on the 6th of March, we do commemorate that day to remember the fallen soldiers or our, let me say, grandfathers who actually struggled for the independence of Ghana during the British rule. So mm -hmm. it's a monument and then it's special. It has seats that can occupy around 35,000 people. So on the 6th of March, people from the diaspora meet there and you will see the Navy on the Atlantic Ocean displaying the Air Force, but also they're doing their thing. There'll be a parade, students from the country and people from other countries come to we got to be part of this great uh, event. I would recommend the Independent Square, which, of course, is flanked by the Black Star Square, with the Black Star as the hope of Africa. So we got to climb it, and we would have an aerial view of Accra, then we get to take some pictures. And also, the Kwame Nkrumah Museum is the resting place for 
our first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, who actually happened to be the leader to gain independence for this country. Well, we have Makolo Markets, a local market, the largest in Accra. Yeah. It was established in 1972. The market has been compartmentalized into sections to make buying and selling easy. In Ghana, shopping means going to the market, unlike in Europe. The best experience, though. Showing our tourist guests the kind of fruits we have, mm -hmm. how the market is, on um, a food station, tour, how the, the groceries that we use for the food, how they have been preserved, how they have been uh, prepared before you taste it. So it's all when you're in Accra, you should visit. We have the WED Bio Center. He was the mentor of Francis, or surgical doctor. He was a Ghanaian, an American with a bit of um, Caribbean background, but he also believed in like Pan-Africanism. Like, let's talk about Malcolm X. Let's talk about Martin Luther King. It's the same ideology. That was the same thing in Kuma had. So he had to come to Ghana. And uh, before he came to Ghana, he fought for humanity, peace, and freedom for black, black people. But when he got back to Ghana, his passport expired, but he loved the country, and he got to meet Kwame Nkrumah. And he also, I would say, was a, a springboard or was someone who also really pushed Nkrumah to give him the conscious effort to attain the independence for this country from Gold Coast to Ghana as we have now. Are these places and tours you mentioned also places locals love to visit as well? Yeah, there are some locals that don't even know the places I've, I've mentioned. Illiteracy rate in Ghana is very high. It's not everyone who would be enlightened or have the insight or the foresight to try to uh, learn about the history of his or her own country. There are some locals that don't have an idea. Even in my community, when I say I'm a tour guide, a local doesn't understand. I'm like, come on, don't worry. I'll explain later. So it's just not their fault. But I think with time, as civilization is surfacing, everybody, because even now, kids, like with the Kwame Nkrumah Museum, schools, it's been mandated that schools should have a sketching period where kids would be taken to the Kwame Nkrumah Museum so they can know the true story about the great man, Kwame Nkrumah. That's great. You mentioned a lot of attractions, but are any of these hidden gems in Ghana and Akara mostly? Yeah, we could. We have the Shai Hill. Mm -hmm. We have the Bree Botanical Garden. Right. We have the Kiwok, but that is two hours from Accra. We just don't do only Accra tours. We do yep. Cape Coast tours, Kumasi tours, uh, and what have you. So within Accra, I would say the Shai Hills, and then we have what's the name? The processing plantation farm okay. uh, and Adam waterfalls within the Ebri Botanical Garden. This are uh, worthwhile to see in Accra. That's great. A lot of people have traveled with their children. Are there any destinations or any places that you can think of which are kid-friendly? Oh yeah, there are a lot of places, but just to mm -hmm. mention a few. And one thing about tour guide for me is we like to put into consideration the preference of the guest or the client. I can say Bywell, I can say Osho Republic. Mm -hmm. I could also say, depending on the type of venue, but there are a lot. Okay. On that same note, I'd also like to know if there are any other activities or attractions which adventurous people or thrill-seekers can do then in Accra. Yeah. yeah, we do have boat skiing, we do have horse ride, we do have, as I said, food tasting, we do have architectural tour, where we take them to, for example, the Turkish Islamic architecture ground, a tourist attraction for mm -hmm. architects. Let's see how it's being constructed because the Turkish government, the Ghana government, uh, had an agreement, and then this was to bring to bring the two countries together and promote Islam. But it's a nice, serene, great to get to see it. So that's also another one tourist attractions. There are a lot. There are a lot of them. If yeah. I want to call them, we're not finished. The, the, the meeting now. <laughs> okay. Since you mentioned religious site, does it have a particular dress code? Depending on the type of tour, if it's a business tour, I think mm -hmm. the client should be in a tie and queue. If it's actually a varsity tour, trainers, shorts, and chain t-shirt. Depending on the month, mm -hmm. we have two seasons here. 
dry from December to February. And the rainy season starts from actually June, July to August. You have spring, autumn, summer. So it depends on the season or month the client arrives in mm -hmm. Ghana. And that would actually determine what he or she should wear. So if it's within the raining season, you should have the raincoats, umbrella, mm -hmm. some boots on. And the sunscreen is very important. Regardless, it's really very hot. Okay. It could rain and then the next moment you can see the sun shining. Maybe you have like around 35 degrees. Be ready for anything, not everything. <laughs> okay, let's talk about areas within Accra. Okay. Can you tell me about which neighborhoods have the best places where tourists can stay? To look for hotels or resorts or even Airbnb? Yeah, so depending on the budget, if it's a luxury hotel, we could do the Best Western Class Hotel or the Labadi Royal Beach Hotel. Mm -hmm. If it's maybe mid-range, we could do Royal Fiesta. We could do like maybe Bora. Yeah, there are a lot. Okay. And if it's just a standard Sylvester guest house, we could do a Rare Palm guest house. So if it's standard, we actually standard but classy. Mm -hmm. At least you should have internet, water heater and all that. But standard, it depends on the budget. It's very flexible. Can you tell me if there's any particular area or any neighborhoods which stand out for having a really good nightlife? Yeah, we have one in Nova called Italian. It was an Italian bar or pub. Mm -hmm. And then we, you could do, if even it's more of a karaoke, the person is more of like a karaoke type of person who would advise Bibles. And then we do have Cloud9 in Osu. We have a whole lot of them. Okay, great. Good to hear. A lot of people also prioritize good city and good views. Is there any particular neighborhoods or area again that they can go to to click photos of maybe nice sunsets or something? A whole lot of them. We <laughs> have Labadi Beach. And we have the Jamestown Lighthouse as mm -hmm. well, which is, of course, also a must-do place when you're in Accra. So there are a lot. Let's talk about local food, like place very high value on trying traditional and local foods. So can yeah. you tell me within the city, what is the best local food that tourists can try? Okay, so if you say the best local food, you have to put into consideration if the client is a vegetarian or vegan or could do all across. But to generalize it, we have kinky with pepper and fish. We have fufu light soup and tilapia, bean stew with fried ripe plantain, banku and okra soup. Lots of options to choose from here. So among all these foods, are they food streets or markets that you can visit? Yeah, we have what we call the local chop bar. We call it chop bar. So uh, depending on how adventurous the person is, if the person wants to do a Western type of food, but mm -hmm. I don't encourage my guests to do Western. You you want to you actually mesh yourself into the culture. So doing a Western type of food, going to the restaurant, really doesn't make sense. Yep. The same restaurant that we have here is the same you have in your country. The difference is you should try our chop bar. You go to the local chop bar to try apapransa, get to try yokogari, get to try kinky, and, and all that. Me personally, call me on my tours. I tell my clients, let's not do the worst thing. You are here because you want to immerse yourself into the culture and have mm -hmm. a hands-on experience. So I normally take my clients to the Choba. But there are also other restaurants. Mm -hmm. Some clients are very uh, stubborn. Yep. You would tell them, but they would opt for what they want and all that. But in as much as it is a local Choba, we make sure you are vegetarian. We talk to the caterer or whoever sells the food that look, he or she doesn't eat meat or egg or fish or whatsoever so we inculcate that into the itinerary that's good to hear i'm a vegetarian so it gives me confidence <laughs> to come to ghana with you <laughs> right absolutely can you be a little more specific and give us name of a few restaurants that papaya. we have papaya restaurant mm -hmm. we have nabadi beach hotel they do have their own work restaurant routine we have okay. kf we have kfc we do have kfc here as well Mm -hmm. We have Barcelona, a whole lot of them. Okay, great. Some tourists, maybe they're too tired after a tour with you. <laughs> maybe they got to see a lot of different places and they want a late night snack. So are there any food delivery apps that they can download on their phone and get food? Oh yeah, um, a lot. Uber we have Bold Food. Bold Food. We have a Jumia Food. We have what's... Even uh, we have Papaya, we have their own app. 
the papaya app. Ghana is really getting developed. There are even individual apps to deliver food. Yeah. yeah. All right. On that same note, are there any convenience stores, grocery stores in the city where tourists can just buy whatever they need in case they forget something? Okay. So would you prefer, so as you are the tourist now, let me talk to you. I would ask you questions, okay? So what kind of grocery stores would you want? Would you want a local shopping mart or you want more of a luxurious Western mall and all that? So you can answer like, me. Yeah, grocery market. What items would you want? Maybe I want shampoo and some food. Or shampoo. We do have Max Max. We do have local shelf filling stations that have supermarkets and then all mm -hmm. that. You don't have to do the West thing uh, or uh, Max Max or the Accra Mall, local markets that have Western products, of course. Yeah. Maybe it's only sunscreen that you can get in these local supermarkets. So that will have to go to the Western supermarket, like Kuala Su. So mm -hmm. get it. But it depends on the items you want and your budget. I, I talk about budget because I don't like clients to pay exuberantly. I believe in reviews. Good job. Also, putting the safety of your client into your mm -hmm. care. For example, when we go to the art center, I don't allow my client to purchase directly. You will tell me by giving me a wink that for me, I think I like this fabric. So mm -hmm. I would do the bargaining because... I've been there for 11 years and I speak around 12 different languages. So I could do the talking, I could back in because when they say you as Obroni, Obroni means a white person or a Westerner. Mm -hmm. If maybe it should cost $5 or $3, he can go, it's around $25. In that regard, I, you just tell me what you want. I would speak the local dialect as if I want to purchase it and I would cut the uh, cost half. And, but I also tried, sometimes I teach my child just how to gain strong bargaining power. Because when, for example, you've been able to buy something for $5, knock the price off. You say, oh, well, let me just give you $2. And the person would be like, oh, no, give me $4. The easiest way of persuasion is to look bold, mm -hmm. pretend you're walking away, and then the person calls you. So you should, should pay like maybe at $25. That is the original price of exactly what you want to buy. I'm learning a lot from today's Charlie Absolutely. Talk series. There's, there's a free consultation. You're not paying. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's just, just a joke. Don't mind me. No, no worries. So some of the restaurants you mentioned earlier, you know, Sophia Restaurant and uh, so on. Do these restaurants require tourists to book in advance or can they just walk in? Oh, it's just a walk-in. Okay, that's great. Yeah. And in case there's a tourist or traveling with their pets, like their pet dog or something, can they also get to the hotel oh yeah they can get there are mm -hmm. hotels that actually have facilities for pets and all that so there are right. uh, availabilities of facilities in most of the hotels we have even the local hotels as well okay that's great good to hear yeah. Yeah. If, even though some so the only thing is rabies maybe you just have to make sure that the, the dog is vaccinated that's yeah. it and if you have the paper to show everyone is fine because of rabies that's great to hear yeah, on the same note, I have more questions regarding drinking tap water. Is it safe for tourists to drink tap water or do you recommend them no, buying? No, bottled water is yeah. what I would, I would recommend. But there are some clients that have been to Africa before, mm -hmm. maybe East Africa like Kenya, Uganda or Tanzania, mm -hmm. uh, that I would say that their DNA has become that of an African <laughs> could try their tap water, but I don't really recommend it. Some have strong immune system so if you want to drink it they are okay but there are some that have weaker immune systems i wouldn't recommend it at all yeah the okay. bottle water is perfect one last question before we move on is tipping common in Ghana to tip your service people tips from my experience i would say it's false but when you realize that the services that a person has rendered it's awesome i would say lively you should tip but it's a nice gesture you wouldn't want to tip someone who hasn't rendered good services would you no so when a person renders perfect service for me that's a good tour i've been talking all day holding back walking here and there yeah. after the tour i wouldn't even be the one to ask you to tip after having enjoyed the tour you would even be the one to tip so i won't say it is not compulsory though but if it's self-satisfaction, if you're okay with the mm -hmm. service, then you tip. 
it's it's a nice thing to do. Wonderful. I'm sure anyone who comes to you will definitely tip you. <laughs> so you mentioned drinking tap water in the city could cause someone to be. What is the health facility like for tourists and foreigners in the city? There are some good hospitals here, but we do have the Iran clinic. Mm -hmm. We do have the Snake Hospital that accept international travel, uh, health insurance. So you'd be treated just like they would be treated in Europe. Okay. Snake Hospital is one, Iran is one. We have one called Dampong. Mm -hmm. Yes, and a whole lot. That's great. In case a tourist, they need a simple painkiller, they think they don't need a hospital, just some pain. No, you just let me know. I'll take you to the drugstore and I'll get you a painkiller. No, okay. you don't have to go and spend money. Uh, but does it require a prescription? Or can you just get No, it's just I walk in and then I'll go to the counter and buy it. Okay, we will do the work then. That's great. And let's also talk about some tourists. They come to talks of different places as a working holiday. So these kind of tourists, they require Wi-Fi so they can work. Can you tell me about the Wi-Fi in the city? Yeah, most public places do have Wi-Fi. Hotels do mm -hmm. have Wi-Fi. But let's not forget that this Africa at times. The Wi-Fi could go off. So what I recommend my tourist guests to do is to get a local SIM card purchase credit and convert it to use as internet. Because when we hit the road, there are some locations that you can get Wi-Fi access, but with a local SIM and the data on it, you'd always be online wherever you want or whenever you want. Okay, that's great. And can tourists purchase uh, these local SIM cards from airport or specific shops? No, they're just on the street. They're being sold on the street, even though we have uh, specific shops, MTN, Vodafone, Airtel, just like in the US you have, or in the UK you have Orange, you have AT&T, yes, the same thing here. Most of the printed yellow, we call them kiosk, like small shops you can purchase from, or you could go to the network service provider's office and then purchase uh, them as well too. Okay. You mentioned local shops. Uh, yes. When it comes to transactioning with local shops, is it best to, or just even in general, is it best to use cash or credit card? They don't take credit. I registered the SIM card for my mm -hmm. client before they, they arrive. Depending on how much data they want, then I, I purchase it for them and then I give them. Because you have to register the card. So normally I use my ID card to register it. If it doesn't make the process complicated. Okay. And on the topic of cash, many places in, in Accra that offer best exchange rate? Yeah, avoid the airport. The exchange rate is very low. Local market. Forex bureaus and uh, like black markets where you can have high exchange rate. So I wouldn't recommend the airport because one, imagine the culture shock when you arrive. Culture shock can happen to anyone going to a different country. Imagine having a culture shock and not knowing the exchange rate, you could be duped. I told my clients, if you want to change money, let me know. I'll take you to a place. I will let you check the exchange rate online, but I'll give you a better rate when we get to the black market. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now let's also talk about shopping. You did mention one market where tourists can go to buy souvenirs. But can you tell me what kind of souvenirs uh, is Accra and Kana famous for? Like the souvenirs? Mm -hmm. It thinks tourists we can have buy. Yeah. Fabrics, paintings, sculpture, drums, okay. wood carvings, okay. among others. Drums is very unique. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. <laughs> All right. Okay. And what are the best places besides the market you mentioned where tourists can buy souvenirs? The Accra International Arts Center. They wholesale. If you go to Oxford Street to yeah. buy a souvenir, you would pay double because they are retailing. They go to the National Accra Arts Center to sit at like a reduced price and sell it at a higher price. I wouldn't advise any other location apart from the Accra International Arts Center. Okay, it's good to know. So you already did give us some bargaining tips. <laughs> and when you are even one hour old in Ghana, mm -hmm. you'll be the center of attention wherever you're in a public place. You hear people call you Ubronin, <laughs> meaning worse than a white person. And you also say Bibini, Bibini, Bibini means a black. It's no racial yep. stuff. It's a normal thing. When someone calls you Ubronin and say Bibini, the person will be like, wow. I said, so that is also a, a sort of conflict. So normally I teach them basic three, the most widely local spoken language in Ghana. Wherever you go within Ghana, when you speak three, you know, everyone understands. So when my tourist guests are with me, I teach them basic three. So when we even go to the market or we go to public 
places. I think they have to say good morning. How are you? What's your name? When we go, I don't even do the talking. They say, how are you? And then they'll be like, what? <laughs> but not knowing that the tourist guest is just in the country some few hours. Mm. But they must have been thinking that maybe he or she has been in the country for maybe like years. So that is another tidbit to actually gain some self-confidence in that regard. Okay, so speaking of bargainings, I a lot of different cities in the world, they have scams that most tourists don't know. Are there any scams you'd like to protect tourists from? In my 11 years of experience, none of my tourists have been scammed. The reason being that immediately you touch down, you get to the arrival hall, mm -hmm. you are in my care. So I become the boss. For you to get scammed means I might stop you from going to a location. Mm -hmm. And maybe after the day's activities, after I've gone home, you go back to get scammed. I would say that's an individual preference, but I, I'm not aware about it. Even though we have internet scams, we do have uh, pickpockets, thieves, and then all that. But that is why uh, a tour guide is always at the forefront to make sure that these perpetrators don't actually achieve their motives. Uh, but I can, apart from the scams, the pickpocket. Normally, when we go into public uh, places, I tell my tourist guests that, look, you bring your backpack, you bring it to the front so that you can monitor it. Don't take a lot of cash whilst we are an a lot of people, if you want something or if you don't have CDs, I could use my own CDs and later when we get to the hotel, you pay me back. So these are some of the safety precautions that I, within the 11 years, in using to ensure that none of my clients get scammed. Can you be more specific about what areas to assure you working than in Accra? They should go or they shouldn't go? They shouldn't go. Nima is one example. Shama, another example. Down. If you go there, it should be during the day, but right. at night, you are at a higher risk without your tour guide. Mm -hmm. But with your tour guide, you'd be safe. And would you also recommend that solo female travelers, even solo travelers, would they be safe in the city? Oh, yeah. When I started 11 years ago, I started with solo travelers. Mm -hmm. I became renowned, certified with a lot of reviews based on customer assessments. It's I would say for everyone, it's for even teens, okay? The most important thing is just, you know, get a good talk. Someone who knows his way, who can speak different languages. I speak Hausa, Italian, French, a bit of Norwegian. I speak a lot of languages. I'm from Seta. So there's one important thing about tour guide for me, and then you look no further. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's talk about the seasons. Again, you mentioned it a little earlier, but is there any particular season or climate that tourists should travel to Ghana? See, now, because of the depletion of the ozone layer or the greenhouse effect, mm -hmm. seasonal recordings are not exact now. Because even during the dry season these days, you don't expect it to rain, but it rains. Yeah. And during the rainy season, it doesn't rain. On a scale of 10, I would say it's 3. You okay. can travel year round. No particular months. Well, you can come okay. any month. Uh, yeah, you can come in just any month. Yeah, year okay. round. On that same note, actually, are there any particular festivals? You mentioned the Independence Day. So, any other festivals or events like that where tourists can get the best experience of Ghana? Yeah, we have the Afro Chela Festival, which is, of course, to mark an event of Pan Africanism. It's actually a festival for, for African Americans or even other people that believe in the same ideologies that uh, Nkrumah, Martin Luther King, Jr., Malcolm X had. We have the Okomowo Festival, we have the Asakutufia Festival. Yes, we do have a lot of festivals. Okay, good to know. Then tourists can plan their tours with you around these yeah, festivals. Yes. Uh, they'll have and the best experience. Some of the festivals, not year-round, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you want to participate in that festival, I'll tell you the months to come. Right. Yes. For example, in Kumasi, we have a festival, okay? So that they actually people of the Ashantis. They speak the tree. Mm -hmm. You realize I mentioned tree not too long ago. We have the Akwesidai. The Akwesidai actually is done twice, I guess in September. But sometimes it depends on the calendar, the traditional mm -hmm. calendar. They don't normally use the Christian calendar. Mm -hmm. You understand? Ghana, we have the Christian religion, the Islamic, and yeah. then the traditional. Uh, so these are the uh, traditional calendar. So when you book me, I'm going to do those researches and then let you know the actual dates and then the flights and whatnot. 
And how long would you recommend people to stay in the city? If it's just within Accra, architectural and food tasting, a minimum of three days okay. and a maximum of uh, one week, because there are other places I can customize a tour that would suit your preference. The only thing is for you to tell me exactly what you want. And we do have this store where I'd get to take you to a place that you'll be we'll taught how to weave our own pente clothes, mm -hmm. like how to the sculpture. They'll, they'll teach you how to do all, all, all wow. of that. But normally, it depends on the client. Some clients stay for two weeks. They'll be like, come, I want to do this. I want to do that. Then I draw an itinerary for the client. I can't give you a direct um, answer, but it depends on as to the preference of the client. Okay. That's great. Netflix is not a bad idea, but uh, they can sure. have more to do if they stay longer. Absolutely. We are hearing the end of our travel talk series. Just a few more questions. What are the essential items tourists should pack when they come to Accra? Time screen, trainers, toothbrush, <laughs> toothpaste, phone charger, passport, very important. Yellow fever card, very important. Mm -hmm. Dresses, I need to draw preference. The most basic one, maybe hard sunglasses. Maybe if you want to go to the beach, sometimes when we go hiking, maybe if you should bring compass, you can bring a camera and all that. So they are just basic packing items. Most important passport, card, cash, international travel insurance. Right. Uh, any tips for first time travelers to Accra? Labadi Beach wouldn't be a bad idea. Depending on the month, mm -hmm. they can just come, relax, get a swim, surf. And we do, what's the name, cruising on the Akosumbo. We have an island called the Island, where we will take the ferry. We'll go there, you get to see a lot of things there, which would actually get you fascinated. And as I mentioned earlier, so we have the Shire Hills. They can do their whole life. There are some clients that are not the hiking type. There are some mm -hmm. clients that are not the drumming. It's just a general tidbit. So it depends on as to how, what the, the personality of the client, the preference of the client, so that actually gives me an idea of as to what I should inculcate in the itinerary. Also, do you want to give any tips to the first-time visitors who are coming to Accra? Tips yeah. to a tourist? Maybe uh, things they, they should, should they do. Should, they should try to taste local food, be okay. confident, learn basic tree, and then they should work on their bargaining power. I mean, <laughs> these are some of the most important tips. And they shouldn't <laughs> shy away. From that tour, they should rather immerse themselves into the people of Ghana, as I said earlier. Maybe are friends and nice people. If you're holding back, there is no way you can achieve or have the hand on the experience that you came for to immerse into the culture. Those are some basic tips I'll give. Okay. One last question. Are there any medications or items that travelers cannot bring into the city? Firearms, illicit drugs and some medications that are not under the law of Ghana that are not, I would say, as, okay. uh, expected, yes. Okay. Uh, so throughout this hour, we talk about how to travel in Accra, Ghana. Uh, we cover local politics, a brief historical lesson on, on Ghana and its history, which is very fascinating, and all the different points we covered. But besides that, is there anything else you'd like to mention before we say goodbye? On my tours, we, we do a lot of dancing. I am a very witty person. I In between tours, I like to let my tourists just laugh. We actually create a, a kind of atmosphere to make the tourists believe that he or she is home away from home. Because I think primarily that's part of my job, not just only about the history and, and all that. It was wonderful talking to you and getting to know Akra Khanna. I'm sure this has given a lot of our viewers uh, and readers even, an idea about what they can expect when they come to the city and why they should go for tour with you. So thank you so much for your time today. It was okay. lovely talking to you. Thank you so much. The pleasure is mine. Thanks for having me. We will end our Travel Talk series with this. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back with more interesting Travel Talks. Stay tuned. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so very much for having me.